Yo, what's poppin', people? Your boy Snacks is back in the building with another banger. And you know how we do before we get started. Go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to leave your comments down in the comment section. And don't forget to turn your post notification bell on so you'll know when your boy is going live and when I'm dropping this heat. And on Saturday, an article dropped on Buff Zone about uh, Coach Sapp. And it asked the question, by adding Warren Sapp to the coaching staff, did Colorado make a mistake? Or are they just chasing football glory? Or was it a big mistake in hiring Sapp? So we're going to get into this article and go down it, read it, and explore a little bit. Maybe we can answer this question. Let's get into it. So, the article on Buff Zone is from Rooney, and it asks the question, adding Warren Sapp, a blemish in CU Buff's chase for football glory. And you see the article. You see what it says. And you see the articles by Pat Rooney, published on April 6th at 1217. I was out uh, when this article popped up. I was out with the kids. Doing daddy stuff, you know. Doing my thug thizzle as my phone is ringing again. But let's get through it. And let's see. I read some of it. But eh, but I want your thoughts and what you think about the situation. So let's go through it. Throughout March, the University of Colorado celebrated Women's History month with the lengthy list of clinics and events curated to honor the contributions of women on campus and beyond. Just before the calendar turned to April, Colorado welcomed Warren Sapp to Buff Nation. The NFLizing of CU football program under head coach Deion Sanders continued with the addition of Sapp, likely the most famous graduate assistant to ever grace the sideline of a major college football program. He arrives with the gold jacket as a pro football Hall of Famer, along with a list of relatively recent legal, transgress- legal transgressions dominated by assaults against women. They're not all that recent. That stuff is over 10 years old. This was, in, this was no April Fool's joke, and it would have been funny if it had been. It has been a remarkable turnaround in Boulder in the 16 months since Sanders was hired, as even with the four wins, the Buffaloes became one of the most viewed, most talked about programs in the country. Yet allowing Sapp to begin his redemption tour at CU is a blemish on the CU Buffs road back to national relevancy. I don't know. Because everybody, everybody has to have a restart, you know. Everybody deserves a second chance. So he's saying by prime bringing Coach Sapp in, right now is not a good moment, and maybe Sapp doesn't deserve a second chance. But let's continue with this article. Sapp's off-the-field troubles have been well documented. Following the Super Bowl in Arizona in 2015, Sapp was under arrest for assault and solicitation of a prostitute that cost him his job at the NFL Network. Harley Chaston, months later, Sapp was arrested for allegedly assaulting his girlfriend in an altercation that began at a Las Vegas resort and continued at her nearby home. Sapp took a plea deal in both cases, avoiding jail time. So, the man has paid for his crimes. So apparently, you know, that still is not good enough. But that's not all. There was a domestic assault, arrested in 2010, in which charges ultimately were dropped. So what's your problem with that? More damningly, Sapp was one of several former NFL players named in the late 2017 lawsuit leveled by a former wardrobe stylist in the NFL Network detailing a number of ugly harassment claims against Sapp and other former players employed, or in Sapp's case, formerly employed by the network. He also filed for bankruptcy in 2012, 
due in large to a large part of unpaid taxes and child support and alimony payments. So, okay. He wasn't the only one in those charges, but that didn't go nowhere either. But, you know, a man filing bankruptcy because of alimony and child support and taxes, that has nothing to do with nothing. It's easy. I see a lot of rich people do that, and they still have money, but that's a, just to avoid paying the other money. But let's get back. These points do not make up the background of someone who has made a regrettable one-time youthful mistake. These are habitual actions from a retired player who should have known better, and now he's part of Buff Nation. Be proud. Why not be proud? You got a gold jacket on your team. Everybody has done something in the past that they regret. But in Warren Sapp's case, he has someone that believes in him and someone that believes that all that stuff he's done is done. It's over with. Ain't no coming back. Ain't no looking back. Ain't nobody messing with these little baby girls and none of that other crap. That's done. It's over with. But it's easy to question South's motives in taking such a low-level position. Even his annual salary of 150000 is well above the curve of a typical graduate student. What the hell? You thought they was going to pay him $50,000? That's Sap. He on a graduate job. Of course he going to get more than everybody else. That gold jacket demands that you get more than everybody else. It was only six years ago in a well-detailed Sports Illustrated feature after Sap emerged from his legal issues in which Sap proclaimed, I've always said I wanted to leave the league in a better shape than when I started, and I am not coaching. I am not freaking coaching. Right. He wasn't coaching it. He was done. That was six years ago. Six years is a long time. After six years, the brother ain't good. He ain't did nothing. Ain't done nothing. Ain't been in no trouble. Ain't no bothered nobody. So now I got someone that believes in what I'm doing and believes I can be an asset to what he's doing. And you telling me, that I can't do the job. And yet, here he is, coaching and mentoring young men for the Colorado Buffaloes. Certainly, it's not as if Sap can't be a positive influence. Correct. Obviously, he's had Hall of Fame credentials on the field. Sap name has the potential to draw recruits, yet given he has zero coaching history, he coached in the NFL, combined with the fact that graduate students can't recruit off campus. It's questionable just how impactful Sap will be in that regard. Why? He doesn't have to recruit off campus. Because Prime brings all the recruits on campus. And that's when they're most and that's when they're at their best. So he doesn't have to go off campus to get recruits. We got other coaches for that. But when they touch down in Colorado, when you get in Boulder, when you see these facilities, when you see the campus and the surrounding areas, when we tell you what we can offer you and help you with and get you to, then when you sit down and talk to Sap, if you want to be a defensive lineman, of course you sit down and talk to Sap. But let's see. Boy, this man is... One of his recent passions has been to lend his voice to the cause of CTE and head injuries in youth football players. Anyone who has followed my work at Buff Zone knows that this is a deep and personal issue for me. For those, for those efforts, I applaud Sap. Yet, yeah, make no mistake, this is Sanders bringing his buddy into the fold. Of course it is. His legal troubles be damned. Legal troubles are over with. Don't overlook this takes away an opportunity from an up-and-coming coach prospect looking for their first big break who would likely be hungrier and certainly would be cheaper. How you know Sap ain't hungry? How you know what Sap has to give? 
No other coach in CU's athletic department would get the green light for a similar high. You damn right. And other football assistant coaching candidates with legitimate coaching credentials have been dismissed from the applicant pool due to the far fewer blemishes on their background check. That's a gold jacket. That's a Super Bowl winner. That's a Hall of Fame dude. Of course he gets more privileges than others. That's Coach Prime. Of course he gets to hire some people with questionable backgrounds, but he know they can do the job. It's all about the people you got. Prime don't do it like everybody else. And that's everybody's biggest gripe. Prime is not following the norm. Please, leave that alone and let that go. Because if you follow Coach Prime's career, he has never done the norm or what everybody else does. So that's something y'all need to get used to. And y'all need to get used to that man shining all the time and doing his thing. But let's get back. Buff Zone reached out to Athletic Director Rick George this week seeking further clarification and comment on the vetting process for SAP. What was told through a university spokesman at CU would stick to his vanilla statement released this week. Warren Sapp successfully completed all necessary steps required of anyone who is employed at CU Boulder, including a background check. Furthermore, Athletic Director Rick George personally met with Warren to clearly art- articulate the department's standards and expectations to which he acknowledged and agreed. And that's all you can ask for. If his background check is clear, if everything else he needs, all his credentials, which all he needed was a degree, when he finished that, got that out the way. So if everything else is clear, it's copacetic. But you mad because it's Coach Prime homeboy. You go to all these other college staffs and see how many friends and families are on staff and then get mad at them. I heard from a relatively minor portion of Buff Nation last year wondering if CU was selling his soul for football glory with the hiring of a flamboyant and outspoken Sanders. I never bought into that. If anything, CU and George finally embraced the true change for a long, morbid program and as a result have been outstanding in terms of exposure and tickets merchandise sales. It was a home run hire. On the other hand, CU won four games last year. At this point, I don't believe they'll probably be a little better this fall. But Sanders Bravado, exclaiming that the Buffs will compete for a spot in the college football playoff, is either a simple ploy to continue stocking excitement or a downright disillusion. Adding Sapp's risk to the reputation of an entire institution for the pursuit of a relatively low bar of bowl eligibility. Maybe I was wrong, and that soul selling has already begun. See, Prime say he going for the playoffs. What do you think every other team in college football is playing for? But Prime says it, so it's a problem. In every other locker room, every coach, head coach, assistant coach, position coach, trainer, no matter who they are, are telling their kids, we're going to play for the playoffs, playing for the natty. That's every team's goal. Prime just says it out loud, and y'all get mad at him for saying it out loud. That's the stupid part. That's the part I don't like. But why are you hating on a man for doing what he's hired to do? He's hired to inspire. He's hired to bring light to the program. He's hired to win and take the team as far as he can take them. And that's to the national championship. That's every team's goal in college football. If your team's goal is not to be in the national championship at the end of the year, you don't need to be at that school coaching. Or that school needs to rethink their goals for the year. Small school, big school, don't care. Everybody's goal should be the same. But just because Prime says that part out loud and tells y'all this is what we're going for and this is what we're trying to reach, he's telling his team. He also happens to put it on YouTube. 
Yeah, he might say it in a press conference or two, but it is what it is. But at the point I'm saying is, just because the man says it, it has to be wrong. Because you're supposed to be meek and humble and quiet and don't broadcast or don't say what your goals are, which is stupid in any part of life. If you want something, go get it and say it. Go do it. Been doing it all my life. Works for me. Hope it works for you. But anyway, man, we don't get out of here. Y'all leave your comments in the comment section. Don't forget to hit the like on the video. Let me know what you think. We out. Peace.